throws and cracked. Yeah. It's it was a yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There was one part of the kitchen that's like a things tonight. subgroups working on different work streams concurrently, okay? So Gordy's been running with the, um, with, um, the, the clubhouse enhancement piece and a couple other pieces at the physical golf court and working with Josh on that. Josh is involved in a lot of this. And, um, you guys have been working on pickleball slash uh, rink piece of it and um, Josh and Adam and the staff Thanks, Seth. They've been doing a lot of other work on this, including like grant application around this. And so the purpose of tonight is to bring those work streams back together. This is kind of a toll gate for all that work that's been happening ahead of um, uh, two open houses over the next uh, over this month. To talk about this. Open house next Tuesday, and then the 24th. Same time, 6 p.m. in here. And is the same format as the 10th? It's not building off of that last one. Yeah. So if you miss the 10th, you come on the 24th. Yeah, she's, she's not one or the other, but she's free from the boat. Um, so, this is, like I said, this is kind of coming together and sharing at the commission level now um, what what all all of the work that's been, been doing or has been happening. And then next week we'll get a lot of feedback input from uh, citizens and the community and so forth. So at this point we're not, we don't, we're not gonna ask for a recommendation, no one, you know, that's not what we're, what the purpose is of tonight is mostly to inform. Once we um, get this information, have a chance to start to ask questions tonight, continue to ask questions over the next 
month or so, continue to get the feedback in from the community, then we can start as a commission to uh, deliberate and to, uh, to form kind of our, um, our uh, recommendation. Is that fair? Sure. Okay. Um, so you shall have a, um, an item from me. Uh, the point of my uh, uh, briefing to you all is um, over the course of 2022, um, there were two uh, contractor or consultant-led uh, efforts uh, that, uh, that the staff worked on the consultants. Uh, one was looking at the uh, potential kitchen upgrade, uh, and the second was, uh, we changed the name of it several times, but pickleball, ice rink, golf course enhancements, I then broke, actually broke it into three groups um, because when we went out for the, what we call the feasibility study for the uh, pickleball and ice rink uh, amenities at the um, golf course, I also asked the uh, consultant at that time since they had done the original master plan for the golf course in 2017 uh, to look at a couple of the amenities that were coming up on the CIP uh, in the near term and ask them to rework those and give us you know, say, what's going on in and that sort of thing, those, those kind of things. And, and those, uh, those three main things for that were uh, uh, resurfacing of the, um, the upper parking lot, uh, which would include asphalt and, and uh, marking, um, uh, the provision of a um, picnic uh, shelter, and the provision of a gas run fire pit seating area. Um, so that's kind of what we, we looked at. So um, the kitchen up. Just a clarification, the parking lot, the lower parking lot was also on the CIP as well, of course. Um, we have had the lower parking lot as a an in-house project we've been working on for a while within the city, within the public works, uh, trying to expand it when we had materials Got available. Okay, so that's, those are two things, the master plan items I would, I would there's really two different parking lots we're talking about there. Right, but what I had on the CIP, just for when it says parking lot, that's the upper parking lot. Yeah, okay, okay. Or the main parking lot, whatever you want to call it, the one next to the clubhouse. Um, so kitchen upgrade, that's actually from a while ago. We started that in the spring, um, and that was, the purpose was to look at options for expanding the kitchen and the clubhouse to, in order to provide a wider selection of food offerings, um, put a ball we already covered, and, and that's Um, I just included this map. Uh, I know when we were talking about this with one of the subcommittees and there were some questions about where are all these things. Um, so we'll get to the particulars, uh, but that's a picture of the golf course, Orno Oak Shore uh, Road there on the uh, east side. Um, the uh, park, main parking lot and clubhouse uh, there in the lower right corner. Um, and so just south of the existing parking lot, you see a small circle and a small rectangle, the, the approximate locations of picnic shelter and fire pit, fire pit being the circle, picnic shelter being the uh, rectangle. Um, as far as location, that rectangle, the idea would be if we, several years ago as part of the master plan, we leveled out a spot there, which we've been using for best tents and that sort of thing for when people wanted to do gatherings. There's um, been some grills and some picnic tables up there for a while. So basically that same site and the uh, fire pit location that we've always talked about is off that end of the parking lot somewhere. Um, so that it could be could be both a facility for um, people after golf type thing, um, maybe in the fall spring type deal, but it's also positioned for sledding um, in the winter time. The larger oval just to the north, uh, that is the proposed location uh, for a uh, potential pickleball ice rink, and then um, the the blue square in the far north far top of the map. Uh, the approximate location of the new um, maintenance facility. Um, the provision of pickleball and ice rink at the location shown, which is basically the only place we could put it on this site, um, preclude, uh, means that we need to move our maintenance facility uh, from one place to another, which is not actually a bad thing operationally. Our maintenance facility is not well located uh, for any golfers that use the golf course. Uh, you, know, the, you come off the last hole and you have to go past all our maintenance equipment sitting there. Had a number, for a number of years, uh, I know I've 
entertain complaints about the location of that name. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so on to the kitchen upgrade, uh, the uh, architect who did uh, the consulting work for us um, came up with two initial uh, options, option A, option B. Um, you can kind of see the floor plans there. In general, um, th th there's slight differences. The parts of the building you're seeing there on the, on the bottom part of the building, that's uh, kind of where the existing uh, retail uh, counter is, you know, where you come to pay for rounds and things like that. The part on the top of the, each of those uh, drawings is uh, where the existing kitchen and I don't call it an office, but the little closet office space is just off in there. Um, and then the stairs going up and down in the building. Um, so a couple of deep, uh, variations. Again, one thing when we look at this kitchen upgrade, just to keep in mind is what we were looking at, what we asked to evaluate was getting to the, to the right level to meet all the codes that we would need uh, to meet uh, to enhance our, our food operations to provide things like hot dogs, popcorn, uh, pizzas, uh, those sorts of things. These don't include like a, a, there's no grill deep fryer type of thing. So we're talking right. ovens, hot dog rollers, those kind of things. Regardless though, there's a requirement, rightly so for health, <laughs> that there's a certain amount of cleanup and prep area you need to have regardless. So a lot of um, a lot of the effort would go into providing the spaces for all those kind of things, the, having the right number of sinks and square footage of prep area, all those sorts of things. So, um, um, there was another, there's another smaller part of this, it's not shown on here, there were some proposals also about some amenities in the, not amenities, but supporting equipment um, in the basement of the building um, uh, to support some things going on upstairs. So option A, option B, that's kind of, and neither, neither of those are involved moving any walls. Correct. This is all yes. internal. All of the only really structural change is to take out a door and to move the countertop. Right. One of the significant differences here, I see the counters in different spots and equipment things. But the main difference is this one we utilize that front uh, concession or checkout area. Um, that becomes more of a serving station, a lot far more than uh, the hot dog roller, popcorn machine, they're all up front. So the you see it interact with it, you see yep. it's available. Yep. And then the option B, you see most of that stuff is in the kitchen or in the uh, right. former office space. Um, in your packet, uh, the, uh, the costs associated uh, with those uh, the lower, they're, they're pretty close to each other. Uh, the, uh, the detail sheets are in the appendix. Um, when you see my number in there, I have uh, three, 331,262. That uh, is the price provided for construction uh, uh, with a multiplier of 20% for contingencies and soft costs, um, which I added in there because we have to pay an architect to do final designs. Model in their house knows it never goes exactly, <laughs> exactly the way you expect it to go. Um, so what, what would, I mean, what, what, do you know what the incremental cost or feasibility would be to go beyond this and offer grills and systems, so on and so forth? We don't know. That was beyond what we asked for here. Sure. But I think to provide any of those kind of facilities, we're, we're probably talking about an addition. Or a, or a more yeah. major remodel of the building where we're moving. So it's inadequate for that. Yep. Yeah. I mean, you, it just it just takes up space, and then wondering. I don't I don't know, fully, but there's fire the reason the fire code it's stuff it's and some it's other things. Pretty things expensive. Yes. Generally, which is normal for a kitchen, but and not jumping ahead too hard, you see in here the staff recommendation is that we hold on this. We're not. Yeah. Uh, we think it was a good exercise to go through, but at this point, we we would as staff anyway not recommend moving forward on this at these prices. Yeah. Um, so well, that's why it's a contract. Yeah. yeah. So, There's definitely sticker shock with it, and part of it is it's a really right. it's, it's yeah, but it's a small space, mm -hmm. and um, a lot of it has to do with just the age of the building. I mean, anytime you have plumbing, electrical, the second you know, one thing, it just opens up the small can. I'm not surprised by the cost. I'm just wondering if yeah. it's a you know, if it's a, if it's a medium point that's 
not getting the value, and it's either you do less or you do way more, and those are both better value propositions potentially. Yeah. And we have not, uh, we haven't at least a second one, we haven't gone through a cost benefit analysis or anything like that. How many hot dogs do we have to sell to? You can have an actual restaurant kind of food yep. that's worth double the cost or 30% more, whatever it might be, or you stick with candy and popcorn. And, yeah. Yeah. and or, you know, at some point, is, do we out, have, have we outgrown the, the clubhouse as yeah. it is? The, the initial guidance we got on cost was about a third of this. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. just kind of back in the envelope, we're like, we could probably justify this. Oh, with the, right. Yeah, with the, the cost benefit might actually prove out for this. And, then, and like the equipment itself is like, you know, 40 to 60 grand mm -hmm. of this whole thing, which is yeah. crazy. So we're still so I'm trying to add up like where did all the rest of it come from? It's a lot of it's just mm -hmm. labor, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. It's general conditions, cost for the cost. Cost for cost, yeah. It's a lot of electrical and plumbing. So um, I haven't caught up with you guys on this in a, in a few weeks, but where, we, where I thought we left off, part of this was looking at potentially, you know, putting forth a little more effort into how far can we scale it back. If we were just to buy a group, but like, what is the absolute bare bones minimum? I don't think we've fully gone on that path. So I did have an opportunity to meet with one contractor and Really, even at a cost of two hundred thousand dollars, I felt like we stretched to, wow. to get as much of this done as okay. possible. Um, I do think there are cost-saving opportunities within that, but mm -hmm. it's just tough right now. Yeah, you guys, Adam, you mentioned more experimenting with demand a little bit with maybe food truck pays or things like that's that. What, that's, you know, we've talked about food trucks for a couple years now. See what, what, what we thought after seeing this is maybe we make a concerted effort over yes. this next year. Target some particular right. days, yeah. even if we have to. Uh, words not right. Underwrite's not the right word, but do the guarantee minimums and things like that uh, for a couple of food trucks and see if you know creating something like that creates the demand. And then, yeah. oh well, if if it does, then maybe generate some. Maybe it's worth it. Maybe yeah. Yeah. yeah, maybe it's worth it at that point. Or, or maybe you know the like uh, the place in um, um, Spring Park uh, Brewery. You know they. They do, a, they do a great thing with the, the whole food truck system. I don't think we're, we're a place that guarantees $2,000, and what was the one of them was like $2,000 an hour, but we might you know be able to get a hot dog truck or a pizza yeah. truck or something to yeah. support an event. There was even like some kind of partnership of like, oh, you're gonna be at the brewery on Tuesday, do you wanna come to the golf course on Monday? We have a, we have a league or something, you just leave the truck here overnight. You know, if there's some, you know, right. Yeah. So Josh has uh, kind of tasked him uh, from, from golf, the clubhouse of looking into those and starting to find out who our vendors might be, uh, and then and we can do some of that over the next year. So. Do we, you had an amazing idea when we toured the Wyzetta Beach place, uh, and that was the owner of the Red Rooster. Like, do we know how much that cost for him to help it? Like, it's, would he have a bigger shock of three hundred grand? Would he, you know, would he be like probably? Yeah. Yeah. Like, I feel like he didn't spend a bit. No, um, I think that there's a part of it is just, if you're really starting from nothing and you've got electrical and plumbing that's sufficient, so you then it, you know, part of this is just working with what we have there, which is yeah, I guess I they were able to put grill in there, even though it's a super tiny sure. space, it's smaller than this table. Yeah. Um, I don't know what it costs the city to subsidize some of that, but the city takes their portion of their revenue. You know, they do about thirty or forty grand a year. Yeah, like their general conditions are 50 grand, the fees 25 grand, you've got 35 grand in contingencies, you know, and then it's like equipment 60 grand, plumbing and electrical are 20 each. So, so if you compare it to like the league site, you can spend 300 grand, you're generating 30 grand a year. That's a little, yeah. that's you. But this could and be this is, yeah, so you're trying to shoot one this thing Correct. Just Correct. To, a, to a building that was built as a residential building. the attic, you still see the knob tube wiring. I mean, it's not used anymore, but it's still up there. Yeah, yeah. So it's, the building was not envisioned to do this. No. So it's going to cost us to make it. Uh, anyway, can we replicate it and move on there? Uh, so the next, uh, next topic, uh, pickleball and ice rink, uh, we, uh, we consulted with uh, Bolton and Mink, uh, our engineering uh, consulting firm. Uh, to do some uh, landscape architect work and give us uh, some uh, some diagrams. 
Um, so the, you know, the bottom line was to look at, is it feasible, the point of the study, is it feasible to fit a pickleball ice rink type facility and everything that kind of goes with it at our golf course? Uh, and the simple answer is yes. Uh, it, it fits, it works, it's kind of in keeping with, uh, actually it's a good fit with some of the things that we've been talking about at the golf course as far as diversifying, uh, you know, all season facility, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so it, it does fit. Uh, the biggest challenge, as you see when we get to it, is the numbers, uh, the costs to do so. So you know, a couple things about the site. As, as you see it there, um, the parking lot piece is the, right where the uh, dirt park, lower dirt parking lot is now. Um, obviously, it's expanded and you would need to look to pave it in some way. Um, the ice rink slash pickleball um, site there is um, is sits right where the maintenance shed is. You can see the existing walkway uh, or cartway that comes down there now, um, and uh, a little bit further. The uh, the nice thing uh, again about this option is it fits well into the space. It's reasonably flat. There's some earthwork to do uh, to get it. Uh, Perfectly flat, um, but it's uh, it's not super extensive. The biggest drawback on the site is it does require the moving of the maintenance um, to make the existing maintenance facility. So um, twenty stalls are those additional stalls, or are those does it include the existing lower lot there? That is the existing lower lot. Okay, just pay yeah. So what? The, yeah. what's the and difference? it's a little bit it's a little bit expanded, a little bit. Uh, the existing lot, I don't know. It's just a dirt. You might get twelve down. Parallel okay. right now. Okay. So we're kind of getting a net eight. Okay. Yep. And, and again, this is, I just want to say, this is a feasibility study level drawing. I don't know that the parking lot will be curved like that. It might be rectangular. You know, those are things we work out and detailed design. Are we able to squeak a couple more uh, park, uh, uh, parking spots out? You know, all that kind of stuff is stuff that we would uh, still work on. The point of this, again, exercise is to show that it's feasible and then be able to come up with some rough order of magnitude. This is, this is concept. Yeah. Early on, there's, this isn't really a design. There's a lot of more work to do for that. The, uh, the way it's uh, outlined there, uh, this uh, does uh, provide a, a spot for uh, five pickleball courts and a, a somewhat smaller uh, than regulation uh, hockey rink. Um, we did, uh, we have talked to the youth hockey, uh, perfectly uh, fine with this size. The other thing about this site is there is uh, there is a little bit of ability to expand. You know, if we you know, right now we're showing five pickleball courts on there, we could take six on the site. If we if we didn't have the funding, you could do four and have a little bit shorter uh, rink slash uh, pickleball court. What about general skating? Is there anywhere where you could add a, a big area? I mean, every rink I can think of has you know Clapper or Holbrook. They've got a large general skating area and then boards. So that if you have a team practicing or of, you know, older kids playing shinny, then there's a place for the younger kids to skate. We don't, we didn't necessarily put that into this concept. We have, we, you know, we do something like that now down at the, um, the uh, Casco. Casco Point Rink, where you know we kind of put boards in, on a portion of what was the existing rink there, and so you can have both. Um, you know, we're getting a little bit ahead of stuff, but you know, depending on how something like this would be funded, um, you know, we we would have some kind of scheme where there are certain times that. Practices and things like that, and certain periods of time uh, where it's available for you know, just the public for free skate type thing. So, is the, does the topography lend itself? Is it flat enough there where you could get an area, or is it? I know it's generally a very hilly property, but yeah. is there? A this right through here would be the flattest area. Um, it would take quite a bit of work to make to contain it. Yeah. So you'd have to burn them up around it. Or scenarios where if uh, if we couldn't fund uh, the longer ice rink, uh, we had a shorter one, but we would probably still do most of the earthwork for whatever the optimal size thing was there, so you could expand into it, and that might be a... What are the dimensions of this concept? Um, what is 60 by 65? Yeah, 60 by... Yep. And you should have copies in your packet, too, on, on this board. I mean, it's a pretty good size ice rink. Yeah. It's bigger than Casco. I think that's a lot. Castle is 40 by 80. Yeah, it's not big. 35 it's, it's, by 80. Yeah, it's a significant work. 
but this is not standard. It is not. It is not a Olympic or um, NHL. Well, so that's like two hundred. Um, so uh, you see there in cost estimate, uh, I had hockey rink pickle balls at uh, six hundred forty thousand. Uh, maintenance facility moved is at one ninety. Um, yeah, we actually think we can do the maintenance facility to move cheaper, um, but uh, I've left conservative numbers all these. So we're going through that number. Right? That number jumped out at me as being optimistic. I don't know if I just I don't, which one the maintenance the new maintenance facility. Well, so we're looking. So what we would. We would propose putting in there as a simple pole barn uh, okay. type facility. Um, yeah, on the other end. Yeah. Um, in a much smaller heated portion than what we currently have. Mm -hmm. So the rest would just be gravel or dirt floor for cold storage for the equipment. Because okay. most of you know, for the needs of actually golf course and park maintenance equipment, you know, we mostly need to be able to secure the mowers and other support equipment and have a small area where when we need to do uh, maintenance mm -hmm. on that equipment. At the site, we can do it. Otherwise, you know, the way we work now is most of the annual maintenance stuff. We, we bring equipment back here to public works where we have all the you know, the mechanic and all the, the tools to do it. Okay. Um, so, yeah, we're looking at a, at a much smaller site and also uh, just using the existing. Uh, that site's already pretty much level, graded, has some gravel, what have you. So we're talking minor minor improvements to the land. Um, it's really the provision of uh, putting in a uh, putting in a pole barn type structure. And we want to make it decorative so it fit the, uh, fit the yeah. landscape and everything. That's what my question is. It's a simple pole barn. Right. Can you make it look like yeah. a nice simple pole barn? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we pay, we pay a little more to make it you know, look more like a, I mean, an agricultural barn. Is whatever. it metal? I mean, that's what we're, that's what we're using right now. For estimates, yeah. Yeah. metal? Yeah, well, metal, metal pole barn, single story. What color is it? <laughs> no <laughs> color is chosen. But you know, kind of longer, a little bit narrower, um, for the way that you would park the equipment. And you're talking about parking as well, because it also gains four parking spots where staff would park. Yeah, that know. allows us to keep all our maintenance staff out of. Uh, okay. out and of what the about just uh, from an operation standpoint? Of course, having maintenance away from the clubhouse. I mean, Josh, from your standpoint, is there drawbacks to that with not having those too close together? No, I oversight. Think it's not an issue being away from the clubhouse. Um, we do have a lot of issues down on near the pond with vandalism, carts going into the pond. So I, I like the idea of having a building closer to it. I think that makes people think twice about what they're doing. Uh, that also gets us closer to the pump, irrigation pump house, which is notoriously faulty. Uh, so the closer we can be to that, the better. Uh, I don't really see any issues being that far away. And it's really not that far away. Is it, is it a benefit? Like, I think it is. It gets okay. us farther away um, from, from the action that's happening right there and the morning. So I think it's good for us. Right now, there's a lot of stores outside of the main shed, you know, be it as get pumps or just other equipment. Yep. Would that all be contained? Would there be things that are still So some of the equipment that's sitting outside right now would actually in the process of replacing this. Year. So by springtime, a lot of that's going away, regardless of the location of the building. Um, so no, we, apart from the fuel tube, we wouldn't have anything stored outside. We'd have sufficient space inside of the cold storage. And that's part of that too. Yeah. Well, if we're gonna, if we were gonna make these kind of investments, we're gonna clean it up. Agreed. 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 Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I think you know the, the other advantage, just operationally too, and how the, the course runs the golf course. We get that maintenance stuff away from, you know, being right in the middle of where all the patrons are trying to play golf and, and do all that kind of stuff. And we put all the recreational facilities there, which is the clubhouse. And then we get a separate entrance, drive entrance for uh, maintenance, which is not, I mean, if you think about um, you know, Wyzetta or Woodhill, you know, all their maintenance facilities are offset from where their main um, activity center is in the clubhouse system. Is there any trade-offs? And interestingly, this used to be where, uh, in the vicinity of here, is where the original clubhouse was. Yeah, this is sort of the... So this is, used to be about here, right there, is where you would go get the paper to pay your uh, hmm. cards. And the expense clubhouse is where you make 
Yeah. Correct. Mm -hmm. That is a living separate club. Yes. Yeah. I mean, uh, under your desk. Club, uh, club shack. I think yeah. it's the, it was the family <laughs> home. Well, and, I remember seeing the family home. Yeah. Was There's the some club cool club. photos of, of the clubhouse that used to exist here. They have some parking here. Before there was a pump house. Which is why the part of reason that whole area is just already level. It's got gravel underneath. There's some of it's got grass in here, but there's gravel and everything under there. It's been used for, well, it's used for decades uh, for that purpose. Um, well, I'm not related to the chef, but I was thinking about when you're talking about cleaning up that area that it's currently at, and I was thinking about where you could fire pit and uh, shelter, and I understand it's close to where you do the, the, the sledding now. It seems like it's a fair distance from where you're putting the ice skates. Is there a reason why it's over there other than the sledding? Have you, have you considered whether they ought to be more? Closer? They could be. Um, the reason it, it was originally there and it was originally anticipated or contemplated in um, the master plan in 2017 was to support sledding, I and mean, that was one of the, the drivers was back then and as today. I guess is how do we how do we make that course that park uh, a year round facility that's got the first uses and keep it um, keep it and make it as useful for uh, residents as possible. Um, so that's why it's there. Could there be some kind of warming feature um, down um, by the ice rink? Certainly. something like that. I guess the other advantage for being um, there is it's relatively close to where our existing natural gas lines and stuff are. We just kind of shove them the, under the parking lot. I think it's just a summer shelter yeah. relative to pickleball, but you don't have any kind of shelter for a seated area. For pickleball. Because you're always going to have overflow. We do have some seating that we do if you want to go up one slide. Uh, so we did template uh, there you can kind of see the little black things that are supposed to be, you know, potential benches. And again, this is this is concept. So you know, could that could that be some little covered tables or something? Certainly. Um, could there be a little fire pit down there um, next to the ice rink? Um, I'm trying to think of where my kid used to skate. There's in a conquer somewhere has an outdoor rink and there's a little elongated fire thing. Why does that have so much? So yeah, that's where the kids would put their skates on too, is on one of our benches. Yeah, I think that's kind of idea. So, you know, there's probably a good case for if we got into detailed design on this, would some of those be at least a three sided shelter of some kind, yes. that kind of thing? Yes. I think it's nice up the top of the hill aesthetically. It's a pretty spot. You can see out, you know, there's the shelter and the fire pit. On the other hand, down there, it might, like you said, it might better with the activities also it's less windy down there up on the top of the ridge it's quite windy and if you're shelter if you're having a shelter and a fire pit <laughs> wind sucks yeah. the other the other reason it's at the top uh, just again uh, was looking at golfers too is because people kind of yeah. were historically kind of hung out up there sure. um and so it's yeah, pretty fun but yeah rather than uh, broken down grills and stuff like that let's give them a fire pit and sit around might not want to run it in July, but you know, the, the seating area and everything would still be there, you know, to, for people to gather. So. But again, that doesn't necessarily preclude something on both sides if that's what we want. Um, so, um, okay, go sorry. ahead. Sorry. No, you can continue. I'll ask later. Okay. Um, you want to drop down? And then finally, again, those golf course master plan items. Uh, refresh. This is just the image um, showing again the picnic shelter, um, basically where the flat spot where you could put a tents up today, and then uh, that fire pit. And we've played with different iterations on the location of that fire pit too, even in some of the earlier drafts. Like, should, should there be a longer trail and it be closer to where the sledding and that is, or should it be closer to the parking lot? Um, you know. Again, those th those are some things that if we if we decide that we're gonna move forward with this, we'll- Is it a gas fire pit or wood pit? We were looking at gas yeah. so that we could control it. Um, whoa, 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 where's the Christmas tree? <laughs> Do you gain any parking with the research team? 
Um, I think we do in, uh, we're not gaining parking, we're not gaining space the way we have it proposed right now, but we would stripe, um, and I think that will provide us some efficiency with parking. Um, anytime you stripe, then people start parking closer, you know, it's not just first guy parks all cattywampus and then it ruins you for the rest of the day. parking lot is used first. Um, we're pretty quiet in the mornings. We only have uh, maybe two or three people first thing in the morning. Uh, the lower parking lot fills up in the evening nights, so Tuesday and Thursday as well. Mainly just Tuesdays when you see the, the busiest night. So both of those parking lots are pretty full. Remind me again the numbers, rough numbers of the parking lots. Uh, 20 stalls on the lower slot, slot is, or lower lot is what's being shown in the drawing. It's really dependent on what we get. Are you asking what we have currently or what we would get? Just what's, what's in the scope of this concept. I mean, just roughly it would be about 40, 50 total. Yeah. I got, I just found 27 up there. Okay, so 20 lower, 30 upper. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Gosh, how many other, I know when you have the, the junior events there, but there's, I mean, parking is totally full. Are there other, and there, that was in two of those last summer, are there other events that, that are hosted there where all the parking gets gobbled up? That appreciation, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there really aren't too many days where it's full. Um, it really is a big week during the league play. We have the two junior events. We are looking to add a junior league this year, so that may have an impact on parking. Um, there, I'm sure parents would just wait for their kids to play. Uh, I'm not sure. And what about just peak, um, like weekend, Saturdays, Friday afternoon, Saturdays, as a kid? Yeah, so Friday morning is when we start picking up. Uh, we are, I would say, Upper parking lot is max capacity. The lower lot never reaches that for the weekend, but it does get close. Mm -hmm. And Sandy, when do you, on, on pickleball, when do you foresee that getting the highest usage? Well, generally speaking, it's that you know eight to eleven in the morning time slot. The weekday. Yeah, there's a lot of people playing on Saturdays yeah, and Sundays yeah. now in the mornings. So. Um, but but you can control it with the lights. I mean, if you don't put the lights on at night, you're not going to have people playing. So I think you can control that. We did a survey where we pick them up today. It's just different events. Uh, and almost the majority said morning. But we had some that played between 8 and noon, and then 5, 5 and, and that's the majority. Um, we talked. We've talked about the lower parking lot for a while as being an enabler for us to get, and the picnic shelter is an enabler to have more corporate spaces and events too. Mm -hmm. So there's issues with that. Um, yeah, so if there are no questions, just kind of layouts. So again, cost, uh, we did uh, cost updates on the, um, on the, uh, the rink fire pit and picnic shelter. Um, so we're looking around 113 for a picnic shelter. Uh, based, uh, those costs um, off of our recent um, building of the picnic shelter out on Big Island, less the transportation cost. Um, and that is, a, and that is we're showing a picnic shelter with concrete um, pad as opposed to one over this with gravel. So. so that was a lot bigger than, than what's over here, right? A little bit bigger, but not, but not massive. How big is it? Uh, it says it's it's 25 by 50. Yeah. That's pretty close. Okay. Um, and fire rain, um, that one can be very, is, is pretty variable depending on what kind of, you know, just what kind of seating and things you do. Um, it's 30 drum. Say it? 30 yeah. diameter drum. Yeah. About right. Um, Yeah, <laughs> that's <laughs>
cute purse just made a path through the, through the bag. Um, so, uh, so then, so I, in the document you get a variety of costs there. And so, again, kind of to come back, all these things are feasible. Um, the biggest challenge is funding. Um, so one of the things uh, I point out in here is uh, we have done a lot of projects uh, in our parks uh, and spent a lot of our park money. Um, and so right now, uh, finance is projecting uh, we'll, we've got about 50,000 um, available for 2023 projects in the parks department. Um, and just, uh, it's not in this report, but you know, one of the main priorities I think you're going to talk about in the second part of this meeting is you know, getting after the Hackberry Park Master Plan, uh, which we really need to be doing in 2023, so some of those resources should go to that. Um, that said, uh, there, there are some other funding streams within the city uh, that, that may be available. They are all subject to city council approval, um, and I have not pitched these yet to the city council, so they're purely my recommendations of where we might find some uh, money, and that is uh, one source is our Community Investment Fund, uh, which is a fund that we have um, for community-led projects, which is the fee. Um, and so I've, I've put a couple things down in the funding paragraph where it goes my fund. But even with that, the vast majority of any of these projects has to come from some outside funding. Um, so in order uh, to get a to get a, a leap start on some of that, we did uh, when the when the Hennepin County Sports Grant Opportunity Facilities Grant Opportunity. Uh, came up this last fall. We did put in a grant application for that, um, asking for two hundred thousand. Um, requires a match uh, from someone, which could be donations um, and city funds or a combination thereof. Um, just as a, a last time we used and got that grant, it was when we did the Beaver with uh, soccer field. Uh, I think we asked for two hundred then to a hundred and fifty or something like that in that grant. So although we asked for two hundred, I wouldn't necessarily. If we get anything, I wouldn't necessarily expect it to be everything we asked for, but in part. Um, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, didn't the commissioner say it would be March 3rd? First quarter, yeah. Yeah, yeah. when they released the results. Before we would find out. Mm -hmm. um, so you don't necessarily end up assume March, mm -hmm. so you probably wouldn't get going on the fundraiser until you knew you had that piece, right? Well, maybe, it depends. Yeah. Um, and that's part of the, the point here is, um, um, and then so the rest of it, you know, I just split it down the middle. I said, well, okay, if you really want to do the, the rink thing, what have you, um, you know, the, the hockey association and their donors are going to have to come up with 234000 and the pickleball people are going to have to come up with 234000 So this is easy to split that way. No, not necessarily, but for the sake of <laughs> starting somewhere, um, that's what we want to do. The other thing that, cons that we have to consider, um, and just I want to report, is we've talked in this forum and also at the city council about the fact that 2024 is the 100th anniversary of the golf course and therefore we kind of want to avoid construction uh, at the park that year um, because it would be a good, it's not a good fit. So, you know, a couple options here is if you're gonna try to crunch and do any of this stuff in 2023, then there are some uh, groups, some partners out there that need to be fundraising now um, or, uh, you know, we look and say, oh, this is a 2025 uh, and beyond. These are 2025 and beyond projects. And it may be a combination thereof, I don't know. Um, yeah. Um, so I think, well, I think that with the funding, with the, with the grant funding, you have to reapply for that, right? Is it a, a two-year? It's usually a two-year window to use it. Oh, okay. Uh, the, the good news is, so say you, uh, say, Say we said, uh, so we didn't get it, we can apply for it again. It's an annual grant that we so apply for. They said there's a spring or fall. No, that's for the, um, that's for the, equipment. sorry, that's equipment and playground grants yeah. are twice, twice a year. The facilities grants, which are the bigger ones, yeah. those are once a year in the fall. We yeah. don't, you know, so they work in the spring. So. Well, I think it also speaks to the four versus six relative size. So maybe you do the fundraising without the expectation that we would get money. Mm -hmm. and if the money comes through, then you expand it. You know, so you do the fundraising as if you're going to do four and not going to have the funding from the four, youth four, sports four, four, grant, four, four, okay. right? And and that way, 
fundraising you do, you can commit to a minimum size of this, but we have to know, you know what that looks like, right? And then to the extent you don't really break ground until after March, April anyway, right? It's gonna be summer. In the meantime, you find out about the grant, if it comes through, now you can do full size. So I, I mean, I think you have to figure out whether or not that's a scenario. And so I did throw in here also just a, a, a sample timeline of that kind of thing, you know, so assume, you know, the worst case scenario, or at least the worst case for staff is you tell us you want to do this in 2023, um, because that's, that's crunch. Um, you know, so if we wanted to be, you, this won't, these projects won't take a great deal of construction time, um, but, you know, if we want to be done by November of next year, um, you know, we need to start at the very beginning of August, is my guess, um, if not sooner, sooner is better, um, to do those kind of things. Um, which then backwards from that, we need to, you know, start design. Um, you know, I put on timeline here, you know, we, we, need to, we need to have a decision of what projects we're going to design no bit at the beginning of May, so we can get designs turned around and out for bid, receive bids, award, that kind of stuff, it just takes time to go through those processes. And when you say August, there's also the, the added cost of lost revenue, of course. I don't know how much money we'd be losing from August, September, but that needs to be factored in too. Well, I don't, I don't think you, I don't, well, we might lose the tiny bit of some, just people wouldn't want to be around construction, but you know, part of the nice thing is this doesn't really impact the golf course, the greens and fairways or anything like that. Oh, so you think you can still yep. you know, operate yeah. it? And, okay. yeah. and depending on how we phased it, you Probably you know, if, if you're gonna do the you're gonna do the ice rink pickleball thing, then you know, right off the bat we'd be um, going down to, to build the maintenance facility, that's not really gonna impact uh, course play at all. Just so we get our heads around this, if we so, have to do a phased approach, mm -hmm. could we still do the upper parking lot that has like a hundred year like based on your yeah. fundraising proposals that could be completely separate? Yep, and I think that in, in, in here in the staff work, one of my staff recommendations is you know we've been planning on resurfacing that parking lot for a long time. Um, sure. and we, we have funding, plenty of streams available to do that without any grants or anything, and we probably should do that just as part of normal maintenance. Yep. I mean, it just needs it. Um, and so I would I would recommend let's do it before the hundredth anniversary so it's a facility that we have um, to support any events or anything like that that we try to do that year. And remind me, what, what do we have at the CIP for this year at the golf course? Um, we have this stuff. So par parking lot. Park, yeah, we have all this stuff we were talking about here is, is listed on the CIP for 2023. Okay. The challenge is we don't have, although you know the CIP is a, is a wish list, we don't have the funding to support that without a vast amount of outside so sources. So you said we have 50 grand? Yeah, give or grand. And what are our, our funding sources outside that for CIP items? Like if we said we just want to do a picnic shelter, fire pit, and parking lot this year. So um, that's that's what I was talking about. We might be able to use the community investment fund for some of those items. Um, the community investment fund, other items that it has right now uh, against it, or planned against it, are in the bar parking lot. Um, the only other thing that we have uh, coming out of that fund in the near future is our portion of the highway, or the County Road 112 project. Um, we have to pay, um, the Park Commission wants to know, we have to pay half of each of those intersection lights at, uh, at Willow and uh, Old Crystal Bay when they go in, and we have to pay for a- Those will be really nice. Huh? Those will be really nice. They're just expensive. <laughs> Which colors are we paying for? Yeah. Hopefully the green, 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 yellow. yellow. <laughs> Unfortunately, the cost with the cost sharing is work with the county. We have two roads, two two legs and four uh, coming into those lights. We have to work out. Um, as well as uh, some of the, some of the work for the trail extension and uh, any decorative light pole uh, street lights and stuff we do as part of that project. So those are the things that that it would be competing for uh, in that pot of money. Um, the good news is uh, I originally had uh, one twelve plan for uh, 2023 and I learned from the county that that's going to be at least 2024 so you know there's time for that to you know, 
So how uh, these costs you mentioned, like the one ninety for the, mm -hmm. have you how how much have you pressure tested these costs? I mean, how how confident you could put a range of confidence around the cost here? I think all these costs are conservative and and you know good as far as like we going on that. We yeah. make sure it wouldn't. Okay. Um, like are there have we we haven't done any value engineering or any of that kind of stuff to. To whittle down and narrow it down on or tighter. So you have earmarked a uh, maintenance facility in the parking lot at CIP funded. Um, the C is, funded, you mean? The C funded, yes. Yeah. So, yeah, sorry. Is it the same? Oh, CIF. Um, what is the status of the maintenance shed? Like, is it decrepit? Is it falling down? Is it great? It functions as is? Like, where, where are we at now? Functions? Oh, no, I've seen it. That's why I'm just like. <laughs> Hoping you could articulate it, because I have seen it. We use it, we continue to use it. Uh, it's a nice thin vessel, but no iron on it. Because the part of me is, you know, this is, if we're not able to do this in the, before the 100 year anniversary, we're interested in the parking lot, and there might be funds available to do the maintenance shed too. Is there any, let's say the community scraps pickleball and hockey, like the way on the right field, we just hear that the community is not interested. Mm -hmm. Is the maintenance shed even on the table then? Like, is it something that like is a need we would like to do it? Probably not in that timeline. Understood. Yeah, it's probably, it's something we would, well, we either would be looking at investing in an existing facility uh, in the five, 10 year time frame, yeah. but. Understood. It does beg to, I think, in general, with between the maintenance facility and the clubhouse, starting to think about those things yeah. getting to the end of their life. Correct. Right. That's kind of what I was going after. Thinking really. about five, ten years from now, it's going to have to, meaningful investment or replacement needs to happen. How are we going to pay for that? You know, it may not happen in a couple of years, but we got to start thinking about that. That's kind of what I was getting at. Chris. Like, say this doesn't happen in 2023 or 2024, whatever, you know, fundraising or whatever, like, would, would the maintenance shed? be on the CIP before the 100-year anniversary to generally clean up that area anyway. Okay. We, have, we, have, we haven't had that facility on the CIP as a capital Correct. investment. We have been expending um, operation and maintenance dollars on it. Yeah. Um, you know, doing things within electrical, mechanical stuff in the building, and internal stuff with the staff. Okay. You know, there was a junk pile that developed yeah, outside of it for a while and starting to get rid of that kind of stuff. And I, I had of the city redoing the works facility or looking at the works facility. Is doing those two projects in coordination helpful in any way or do they influence each other? The, the public works building and the yeah, golf course city. building. Like if, if you're like, oh, if we move this, then maybe we won't do this. But if we don't move this, then we need to designate space or, you know, is there any overlap that the city slash park no, not really. I, I have seen some overlap or link uh, just from the construction standpoint of the you know, bar parking lot and the upper parking lot just yep. because I can bid it as one project and maybe see some um, savings on um, mobilization and things like that if I can make it a big enough shaping project for a paper. Where's the more parking lot in the process? Uh, that is in the so um, in the numbers for the pitfall, and I just every, to go back to the, basically everything on that slide uh, is what we're calling pitfall measuring Got it. the costs. Right. All right, so you can see how, um, like I said, there's these multiple streams of work have been happening and need to continue to con currently happen. It may appear sometimes that we're putting the cart before the horse at some things, but when we have a closing, uh, a window closing on this 2024, everyone, we don't want construction going on there and other things going on, then we need to, we need to, you know, start the fundraising now, like to your, to your question earlier, I think we need to start the fundraising now, even if we don't know where the, um, if, what the grant, Funding will be, and you know, we need to start 
these species, and that's why they move forward on grants and that kind of stuff, because it all has to coordinate and come together in this timeline that he put together here, which he's stressing over, if you can tell. <laughs> I'm not sure, I just, if you want to do something in 2023, time is short. Yeah, I think you need to have a contingency plan for, and there's kind of a inflection plan of a go, no-go, you're advancing design, moving down the road, what if one of these four funding sources doesn't come in, how do you back all that? And are you, then right. where yeah, how do you back out of it? How do you back out of it? What are you left with there? There's, there's a lot of, right, there's risk with that, and they're not insignificant amounts either. Right, and the council has not taken a vote on this or anything yet, but the, the, the informal feedback I have from some of the council members is, you know, we, we're not gonna pull the trigger on detailed design until there's a level of comfort um, that we're gonna be getting close to I think there's some general, as long as there's, uh, you know, as long as this continues along the path of getting positive feedback from the community and all that, I think, I think the council will support doing these things, but I've heard from individuals on a couple occasions, as long as the majority of the funding is coming from whoever the partners are um, on the general. So yes. next, so next week is the first, first of two open houses. I think we're gonna cover, among other things, we're gonna cover the process, what we've done so far, what the process looks like going forward. We're gonna talk about site selection, why, you know, not just the, um, the golf course location, but, you know, what other things, uh, what other site selection work did we do that led up to this, and why is that one that we're targeting right now? Are there other sites out there that we would that we would consider, you know, under what case would that, would that be? And then third, you know, obviously there's been a lot of, there's been lots of concerns about the design and the impact to, to the golf, golfing operations, the impact to the neighborhood, the impact to traffic, the, that type of stuff and how, you know, and so that's also going to be included next, next week is, you know, what are the, the things that we're trying to accomplish here? What are we trying to what what are we trying to mitigate here or what's on our radar? And that sort of thing. I think that I think this is a great start. I thank you guys for doing this. I think you know just my little opinion here is that is that if we're going to do something like this in Orno, it needs to fit in in the it needs to fit in kind of the the style and. Uh, the history of Orno, it's not, the objective is not to create a pickleball stadium here. The objective really isn't to solve the, the needs for uh, the, the pickleball community, greater, greater Western Metro pickleball community. And I think that, I think that this is coming along. I mean, I still have some, I still have some questions about about just making sure that this fits with the, the Orno style, the aesthetics and that kind of stuff, but. I think also the, the, the skating component is important and it's one of the four, so that's, they got a big seat at the table here. And I, I know we've had conversations with them, like just making sure that they're up to speed, we can't make any assumptions on their interest level and like, does this, really actually function for them the way they would expect a $230,000 investment? Is it accomplishing their goals for needed ice time? It seems to me that for association use, you can't really count on this because it's what, and it's, it's fun to have outdoor skating, but they can't like plan games and that kind of stuff yeah. outside. It doesn't solve a huge problem. It doesn't problem solve a need for like ice. So it's kind of like, but you know, they, um, yeah, but so that's where I was kind of like with general skating and it does, is, it, is it serving a community benefit if, if, if the association is putting in two, you know, quarter million bucks in this thing, they're gonna be like, that's kind of ours. Yeah. And now how is that benefiting the city and the little kids that wanna go skate and all of a sudden the band team shows up and the ribbon slaps you. And they're like, well. And that, and we have a little bit of, we've talked a little bit with the, the hockey association. They seem to be excited. I mean, one of the, one of the first feedback track is, well, we'll get you a Zamboni for the site too. Oh, okay. Uh, now we got to put a shed for a Zamboni with it. Anyway, um, 
we do have uh, on the, this is a very important issue. One of the things we would have to work out with them in, in their um, fundraising is, um, and we have a similar model with the Illinois um, Baseball Association, where you know the the Beater Wood baseball field and the um, Hackberry uh, T ball fields. Um, those were built jointly between the city and the baseball association, and and those portions of those parks are maintained. You know, jointly. we've done grants just as last year did a grant. A joint grant with the baseball association for some, uh, you know, maintenance equipment, and so there's a there's an agreement from like starting in the '70s, and I think they redid it in the '90s. That specifically talks about, you know, you have dedicate you association will have dedicated use in these time periods on on these times, and you know, and you will help us maintain it. And we will. Do and on the maintenance side, how does that work? Because there's clearly. I mean, it's only a couple months of the year, but there's maintenance required here. It's going to cost money. And yep. Staff time for the association, the city, or both. Yep. The biggest, the biggest, uh, I was asked that question last week by somebody as well. The initial, the, you know, the, the facilities maintenance, again, with that, that concrete or that asphalt uh, will, will require work every, you know, 15 years or so. The biggest thing I see for the city in a maintenance cost, you know, like an annual routine maintenance, is uh, just our internal workforce doing ice uh, maintenance, which is kind of what takes up part of our time now. Um, that said, we've recently upstaffed, so it's just a matter of moving those assets to those things. The other good news is with the Baseball Association and with the Hockey Association, you know, we have a kind of partnership right now down at Casco where, um, you know, they, they come and help clear the ice, they help put the boards up, take the boards down, um, you know, same thing happens at our baseball fields. Uh, Baseball Association does all the infield maintenance. We sometimes help them with, you know, a skid steer or something, help move some ag line around or whatever. But um, will these boards go be put up and taken down? I think we were again not detailed design, but the idea that some of the other models we've seen of this kind of shared use is, you know, they would they would stay um, year they'd be year round because they're far enough. They're supposed to be far enough back so they don't impede the. They may be photos? integrated into probably a, a fencing system, you know, so if, uh, for the pickleballs not to go flying. Does Cole make having photos of something like this that exists? You can see it, like an actual photo of. Uh, I'm sure. sure. Yeah. We've, built, we've seen some. I mean, there's uh, some. there's a place in northern Minnesota. I can't remember. I won't say Alexander, but it's. Did you, could you, just, did you send that around? Yeah, if I find it again, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I actually took my kids up on the North Shore skating two years ago. It wasn't pickleball, but it was the same kind of deal. Um, and, but they had done this where they had the, the fences and everything up, but it was, uh, I think, three basketball courts. Um, so same kind of idea. But just looking at it, you can tell that they're... So is the fence things. for like the pickleball, is that like, I know we're really in the but is it like, like on top of the hockey boards? So it's like an extension of the hockey board? Yeah, I would imagine something like that. I think for safety. Yes, for golf balls. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. What, um, what is so far, and we have to open house coming up, but what so far has been the neighborhood? Uh, most of the staff level questions. Okay. Uh, and then there's been some. I know we have three of the closest neighbors. Yeah, you no, know, and we've had some, some questions that you people like. Uh, there was a rumor going around that we were planning to shut down the golf course and create a pickleball stadium. And I'm like, well, no, this is actually in, you know, part of the criteria of looking at this concept this feasibility was it couldn't impact golf. Um, so um, we've had some of that. So I know we've had some interactions golfers. with the, yeah, with some golfers. Golfers have been concerned. Yep, we've got feedback from some golfers. What about neighbors? Um, Anything yet? Just, I think, once I heard through Sandy at our last uh, committee meeting about uh, concerns about noise, noise okay. um, traffic. traffic. I've gotten concerns. I mean, I, people have asked me candidly on the negative side, like, you know, what is it? Is it you know, pick up is noisy. Just kind of those things, traffic, all that stuff. And I, I honestly, I'm, I don't think people really know what's being proposed yet. And so we're going through this process. And on Tuesday, we'll bring people up to speed. I, I don't think people really. Um, it's normal to react, but it's yeah, to understand. I don't think people have fully seen the house on the table yet. So, and that's, that's the reason to have the open houses yep. and have the public engagement yep. is to socialize the ideas. Well, and one of the goals 
for those open houses. Is go from, you know, sort of a more of a concept of sound to, well, how loud is it at 500 feet? And it's, I think when matters a lot too. Right. So, so, so putting some measures on things mm -hmm. rather than the very general right. that we've been at. Um, so we've done a little bit of research around the song levels and the distance to different things and what it's compared to, so that it becomes a little bit more something people can relate to. Yeah. And, and the other thing that you hear concerns about is this a fit to whatever the, the plan and the master plan of the park is. And you know, my the analysis of so far is well, yeah, it fits right in with what we said we were going to do in the uh, comp plan uh, for the golf course and what we've been at least since I've been at the city been looking at is like how do we make sure that's a viable park. Um, facility going out into the future for the community. And so, you know, we've done business studies of looking at winter activities and all that. So there's a potential happy marriage there for all that kind of stuff. Some of that has, because we're still at the very early stage, that hasn't been, you know, communicated or put together in any kind of public yeah, affairs type thing. It's important to be mindful through all this as to how it's going to impact the golf course um, as a business unit. You know, we've been, been in the last 20 years, most of those have been in the red through COVID. The golf course is now making some money again, which is great, but I just want to make sure we're not taking away from the experience on the golf course side to the point where it's going to tip things back into the red and now we're subsidizing it again the past. And Lafayette does pick a ball right adjacent to itself yeah, as it well. Yeah. So it's not unprecedented in our community. How many courts do they have in Lafayette? I'm not certain. I thought it was four, but it could be more. Uh, uh, I think they have eight. Is it that many? Well, they're, they're just portable nets that they bring out to the test sites. So we use them all. Yeah. I mean, I. When the double in there, three in, we love the six, too. Which is right there. I mean, I live next door. Where this is located, my particular house, I don't think noise would impact personally that much because it's around the corner. However, I could see people on the other side of that hill, for example, caring about that concern. Um, parking is going to be a problem. Yeah, for the golfers. Noise right. for the golfers. Noise for the golfers. That's probably well, that's a common other country club. Um, I think parking is still a problem. I'm not, Which, I'm not sure. If this all get used like it should, it, it seems adequate most of the time. And when it, Certain times it will probably be a problem. The uh, so. you know the the rule of thumb for building any facility, uh, recreation facility, is you know no matter how much parking you plan, you never have enough. Um, you always end up expanding. So yeah, uh, yeah, the, the depend. I mean, I guess there are there are some future expansion opportunities for that like lower parking lot. Um, yeah. yeah. It's, again, it's, it's a matter of cost. And, right. Yeah, and the twenty spot is enough to support five courts. Sure. Yeah. Um, you know, you're talking about those peak times, which I don't think are going to be pickable times. Yeah, I agree. So yeah. I'm not I'm not hugely concerned about the parking. I'd be better than that, but yeah. 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 yeah and if you're concerned about the peak times and the and the traffic and noise, you know, one way to remedy it is to limit the parking so people can't mm -hmm. come. traffic standpoint, I mean, this is, one orchard road is way underutilized. It's it's a nine ton design, um, and it's designed for three or four times its current, um, its current what, uh, uh, this is a lot, but what happened with, where are we with the cross country ski trail? Let's talk about that. That's pretty fun. Is people were over cross country um, here a week ago. All right, so wrapping up this topic, I think one, one last question. Sure. Yes, from a from a functionality for pickleball, so I see five courts here, and you're limited on expansion. Um, I mean, if you could think of the, the perfect pickleball setup, I mean, how many how many courts is that? Is expansion important? You know, it's a big investment, and I'm thinking like, could you foresee a pickleball event of some sort? You know, where you where you're trying to get a bunch of people together and have a little party and 
you, if you want more than 20 stalls. Oh, well, no, I don't think that that would necessarily be necessary. Um, because when you do an event like that, what you're generally going to do is you'll have, you'll have, let's say you do doubles in the morning and you do doubles women's in the morning and you do doubles men's in the afternoon and you do, you know, mixed doubles at different times. So that's plenty of course. So by, by example, at West Comic Activity Center, they do a big pickleball classic every fall. They have nine courts. Okay. And those nine courts um, support like 200 participants. So that's a lot of, that's way more than I would think you'd want to do in something like this. I don't think you'd want to do something that big yeah, here. Sure. Okay. So, I mean, I think you could do something, but I would generally speak and think of it as more of a community event, whereas they're drawing from, these people come from lots of Wisconsin. For their tournament, can't imagine why. Um, but you know they're drawing from Bloomington and Plymouth and a lot of different places because they advertise very broadly. I think I see this more as a community resource. I don't see it as that kind of a thing. Yeah. Um, but you could, you know, with that many courts, you could certainly do something. And there's some other. <clears throat> I mean, you could have 40 people. So if you think about it, you get five courts. That's 20 people playing simultaneously. Right? So if a group of players rotates off and you're doing a tournament, you get another, you get 40 people you can support simultaneously in a single, you know, phase of the event. And then later you can do something else. So you can support a lot of people with that many. Is there a, this probably just varies when you're trying to accomplish the whole thing, but is there, is there a, a, a kind of a sweet spot number, like of course, that you went in, going into this right now, you think yep. would be, you know, two is too, too few because you need a critical mass. Eight will probably maybe buy enough one, maybe two. What's, what's ideal? Yeah. Um, you know, I think most people think six is ideal, okay, as a drop in sport. Mm -hmm. But I think five is completely adequate to draw people. So the key is you leave your house, you expect to show up, and somebody's going to be there. If you only had two courts, People show up with their four players and they're going to play it and they're going to own the court and then they're going to leave. Mm -hmm. That's not pickleball, that's tennis, right? That's why tennis courts just don't get used. Um, so, you know, four you could do it, five is just a better number, you know. Um, and, and I will just tell you, I mean, at, at West Tonka, any day of the week, whether you're outside on the tennis court or you're indoors, you get six nets going and on a lot of days it's nine nets going. But like I said, they're drawing from a a pretty wide area. Yeah, I think again the goal is not to create yeah. destination pickleball to solve the pickleball demand. I mean, no. we are you know we're one community, but there are other communities out there that are currently talking about adding pickleball to their community to their areas too. And so it's it the intent here. I think you know I'm not talking you know I think on, on behalf of the committee here is that it's supposed to be kind of a, Neighborhood type of yeah. amenity, you know. Right. I mean, neighborhood plus, right? It sure seems like the next three years, the number of pickleball courts are now is going to be it's going to quadruple. I mean, if you're trying to pick up the paper, they're talking about building a new pickleball. Thing. True, but you're also going to see every community adding some. So if you look at the the pace of pickleball, if you had six courts, that'd be enough to support the current demand for all of Orange, mm -hmm. based on its population. So. You know, if you were to build more than that, it would be because you're trying to draw from other areas. And as other communities add theirs, yeah. there's going to be, I think, plenty. So if your question about holding events, I mean, I don't think that the goal is to be able to have yeah. events here. If you're going to have an event, you're going to go to a bigger facility with the parking. You know, so the goal of this is, is to just satisfy the community demand mm -hmm. and just kind of maintain it. it in my mind, this is the Orno golf course version of yeah. pickleball right here. Yeah. It's not, we're not trying to build the Hazelwood, it's or Hazel team. Yeah, yeah I, I would agree. And I, I mean, I think it's nice. I mean, I'm a golfer, but I've golfed at Orno golf course once because I prefer Doug Baker. 
There's nothing that draws me in that direction. Now, if I go over there to play golf, I mean, play pickleball, and I'm there kind of regularly, guess what? I'm used to doing that road trip. I know people who are there. We say, let's meet at the course. So I do think it's going to be good for the golf course um, in the sense that there's a lot of people who go to Baker, right, or go other places to golf that just don't think to come to Oregon. Um, so I think it's going to be good exposure in that regard. Um, but, you know, in terms of visibility, it's not right in the middle of town where everybody's driving by and seeing it and saying, oh, let's go play pickleball there, right? It's going to be a word of mouth thing among the players. And that's what I was saying earlier about kind of the style of, you know, right. let's make sure that this aligns with the style. That's important to me. And I think that, I think that we're, we're heading that way, but I think that there's a lot more work to do to make sure that if we do, if we move forward with this, that this really is an Orno type of approach to pickleball. And I'll tell you this, because we see this at, at the community center. If people are waiting to play, they're just gonna go somewhere else next week. So it is self-limiting, because you don't wanna come to play and be sitting out for 15 minutes every time you finish a game. You, you want to be rotating in. So it'll, 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 it'll peak where people will find out about it and they'll come, and then they'll say, yeah, you know, that level of play is really community play. I'm looking to play with the 4.0s. They're gonna go out to Lone Pine. They're not gonna play here, right? This is gonna, in my opinion, be that community play, that entry level, family play, um, where you've got multiple levels interact. So I think in that regard, that's where it's going to be self-limiting because people are looking for a certain type of play, and you won't get that high level of play with five points. You're going to get community play. And while they're waiting, they're going to get a thirty dollars hot dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. It's all coming around. Okay. Yeah. All right. Moving on. Next topic. I'm going to go. All right. Is it snowing out there again yet? Not yet. Clouds will be back out at 4 a.m. Did you see Jersey? Jersey, you know us. Did you see what she said in general? That she got plowed in? Where she Off of the truck. 19? Oh, that's county. But I don't know if it's. I don't know. She's down by the bar. Yeah, I don't know if it's a county. The, cloud and the, the driveway goes out to the county or road or what? Yep. All your stuff. So I, I didn't mean to be rude by looking at my phone while we're talking, but I was trying to get up to speed on some whatever we're going to do all the All right, so uh, our annual exercise here, we're trying to give some direction and set up some uh, uh, subgroups here. Um, Josh can I put this, this off together uh, really just kind of based off of what we've been talking about this last year. Um, some of the assignments uh, that we had on last year such as Summer Beach have been removed at this point. It's not really staff directed uh, what our next steps for that. Yeah. The heat uh, is kind of rolling this forward and adding some things that we've talked about recently. Yep. And we are not limited to this list as well. So as a park commission, if you have goals, this is the time to get off. Yeah. And yeah. also, this is not set in stone. And no. anyone who's in business knows this is this will, uh, this is an organic document here. We did have um, pickleball and hockey at the you know, in the community on here last year, too, though. I think it's important. So I, I left that off. Um, I noticed. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we we kind of have achieved our goal in that for that committee where we got to the point where we determined some locations. Uh, now we got the ball rolling where now we're having urban houses. Um, so this is that's something that we can definitely add once we get to that next step, whatever that is. So we need to bring it to a formal meeting for park commission and then the city council for approval for any next steps. So that, that's why I left it off um, sure. for tonight. Sure. All right, so for tonight's 
let's focus on the first column, second column, third column, and less so on the fourth column, but not really on the fifth column, because we can fill those in once we start there. So uh, it's high level. Uh, one of the things that we're that we, uh, that's on your radar, radar for the year. This is, again, the way that I see this committee, you guys are all, I appreciate all of your contributions as a, as a volunteer and your contributions as a, as a staff person. This is, you know, you guys are here because you have some particular interest. Um, and so this is where we try to get those out. Casey, Casey's rule out. Casey has surfaced a little bit um, recently as a, yeah, I think you keep on as kind of a back backup, but we don't need this. Uh, I, I just ask, I know that he's still on Crystal Bay Park, and yeah. uh, especially with pickleball uh, rolling down or being delivered, I would be interested either in Hackberry or Crystal Bay Park and thinking about how much that's Okay. So as far as while we're on Crystal Bay Park, I think that that I, I think that we should remove that from our radar for this year. Um, I think we pushed it out on the, on the CFB anyways, didn't we? Uh, we did uh, to next year. So the idea for our timeline. So the, the way that we're kind of looking at everything is like a three-year window for projects. So the first year would be master plan, second year design, third year. So, so we have it if in we're in four the, years from now, then? Yes. This is what we have it on the CIP for? Yep. If we're in the uh, process of a master plan for Hackberry, I thought there might be some efficiencies to do Crystal Bay at the same time, or at least to get us in that frame of mind where we're looking at, you know, if we're just dreaming, so yeah. what can we do at Crystal Bay that we couldn't do at Hackberry? What do you guys think? I was. Personally, I was really jazzed up about Crystal Lake Park last year. The other priorities just kind of overwhelmed that. Um, I think there's a lot of potential for it, but I think there's a lot of work too um, to do there. We did, we did the a lot playground. Over the playground. I'm talking about the, the big, big. Yeah. We got thousands of bikers coming through on this trail every year and this is the face that they see. This is the face of Orno right here. Like how do we make this something that works? And there were yeah. probably like improvements on Brown Road right too when we were talking about crosswalks and stuff. And yeah. that, that's why I think it's like important not to lose you know it on the radar that yeah. it's just part so it's of a matter of it's whether we have an appetite to, to start you know fight that off for this year or not. Hackberry and, and Crystal Bay are two biggest projects coming up. And, and that's another reason. So I, I would keep it on for this year, even if we could have this committee meet just to okay. come up with some, generate some ideas of what that part could be. So it, it continue to refine long range master plan for the park is kind of high level. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Um, I think we should give Casey the option because that's his neighborhood. I did talk to Casey. He said he was fine staying on the new capacity or being removed if someone had more interest. Yeah, I think we, we give him the option because we can always, we can put three people on there anyways, so. Anyone else have a specific interest in that one? I would like it if there's not another yeah, okay. neighbor nearby. Um, pencil you in. All right, so kind of talk, do you want me to just go from top down or is anyone else going? Um, Dan and I plugging away at the old <laughs> tree lighting event <laughs> and fundraising thing. I think that's fine. Could I recommend maybe an additional member to this tree lighting event? I, the way it's been growing the last two years, I'd like to see more Park Commission uh, involvement. involvement and involvement. I was only broke the year. Was, was, it, was it viewed as a success this year? <laughs> it was. It was cold. Though. It was cold. Uh, we had a good turnout just like it. Yeah. Time. I showed up late. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> um, Where's your name? Yeah. Okay. Um, so, again, we've got uh, Rick Giordano.
Christy and Jen missing tonight. Right, I mean, yeah, Casey. Um, but, okay, so if anyone want to volunteer, I can only volunteer once for that. So. Well, I'm just, I'm sitting back because if we are going to do fundraising, that's going to take a lot of time for the pickleball. So yeah. I just don't want to overcommit. I'm just sort of, you know, can continuing we, to learn we, about parks. Sandy, you with the, with the some gas tricks? What, on the? Uh, in a promise that. On the, on the lighting the tree in there? Yeah. We'd like to donate to our pickleball class and our tree lighting class. It just has come up. That's just has come up. Out. They were going to use it in like last week or two, and then they went and the, saw the parking lot was closed, and they were kind of misunderstood what that meant. So I think we just need to get back yeah, to that. Yeah, so the parking lot. In it. So everyone knows uh, on the weekends we would plow the lower lot, we get the upper lot for seven, uh, and then throughout the week we get the lower lot. We what we talked about for this last year was that the school would help groom trails or provide something that, that could groom the trails and then mark it somehow. That never happened this year, and I think that's where it's still left with the school, is that we're willing to host them in the cities while we can set up trails. So it's really on the school right now, it's taking... This is the... So is there a point at which we... Do our thumb. We have to get something to groom the trails with, which we don't have on the CRT at this point. Does that also pay the schools, or do they have each other? So we have a roller, um, and they will bring it, and we'll do it. Um, Is there a happen. reason why they didn't engage this year? Did they say why? It says, okay, so it says, Orno didn't really see it. Orno golf course is season for a variety of reasons. Baker is very good as soon as um, there's enough snow. We also skied on Long Lake this year when it was groomed. Someone that lives on the lake used the Orno groomer to set a trail. Mound skied at the trails at their school. I think that for the golf course to be used, it needs to be groomed on a regular basis and that the trail uh, works for those that ski there. Um, Baker did a fantastic job this year. skiing at the golf course could work. It just needs a person to drive the grooming. I think, yeah. And I, I, I love that idea. I think the more natural uses for the golf course, the better. Yeah. Is there a demand for cross-country skiing? Good question. Well, it's probably like a lot of things. It's an awareness raising. Yeah. If it's there, they'll come. You know, those two gentlemen, we saw, I mean, yeah. they absolutely loved it, right? They thought it was beautiful and, you know, had a lot of good things to say about it. So, you know, I think it's, I think it's, con it's conducive, meaning it's the right environment for it, but, you know, it has to be reliable and it has to be advertised and all those kinds of things. Do you, do you Maybe it would be some ways to what you said about pickleball would be more of a, just a local community use rather than competitive school, you know, what everybody would do. But what does it cost to maintain it? Yeah, that's staff time and then the piece of equipment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think well I always did do more of the use. I think if that's what they're looking for, that's what they get with Baker. Mm -hmm. They can go 
out there and know that it's, it's ready for them to go. So if you're willing to make that commitment, I think that'd be great. See what this ballpark what that would cost. What it would cost. I guess the question is, you know, maybe you could do that. Put it for a year and like try it. You know. Well, so at North Oaks, we we had a UTV and we bought tracks for it, and I think they cost maybe eight thousand dollars for the tracks, and then we built our own groomer. It took us about an hour to groom the trail. So it's not a huge investment. What did the they used to do it? Did they? Uh, yeah, they used to groom. They used to groom trails over there. There's a groomer at Gear West. Okay. His, his name's on the. Uh, you can, you know, I don't know how much it is or anything, but. Well, okay, that's what I was going to ask. Is he, yeah. he does it? Hmm? It's like a guy that you pay and he does yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh really? Well, they certainly have all the connections. They, they used to come. They used to come out. Like, there used to be groom trails that. That were lighted. And, yeah, yeah. You know, like what you, you know, what you so that's what I was going to ask. Is in the email he for, refers to it, the Orno groomer. What does that mean? Could it mean the school or maybe that was or the school? Or Gear West? Yeah. So does the school have equipment? I, I'm assuming so. Yeah. I mean, just a snowmobile. We do have the roller, like you said. But yeah. That's it. So I think maybe you should, maybe you should <laughs> follow up with them. You know, I'll forward you the email, but I'm sure that, that Gear West you know, would have an interest in helping us solve any problems we have too. I don't know if it, I really don't have a sense of demand, but it seems one of the lower cost ways to enhance yeah. the winter out right there mm -hmm. in a very easy way and without doing a lot of cost or a lot of changes. And so if it's used, it's used, you keep doing it. If it's not, then you don't. But I think it's worth giving it a shot this winter if we have plenty of snow. Right. Yeah. Another maybe intermediate step would be just to mark a trail for snowshoes. Yes. That's a good point too. Uh, we're not maintaining it, we're just marking it. All right, well, can you connect with Rick on that too? If you need me to bring a snowmobile over here, we'll get in touch with Rick. <laughs> Did you design your snowmobile for him? I should have. It's a sign, no <laughs> So, uh, trails, I think that, uh, so on their radar is this Moose Line Dakota Trail, and that's done, right? No, no it's not. No, that's not the Moose Line. That'll be a Moose Line, moose line. okay. Um, Christmas, or Christmas Cross Country Ski Trail, and then um, our Lowry Connector is still on the radar. progress on, on um, um, along 19. Okay. Uh, she, she really wants to put the trail along, or at least just, just mark it, it. Uh, yeah, right. paint it, right? Uh, from Navarre South. So she said that there's some program that the city has that Those are the four things on her radar there. Uh, golf course. Good. Yeah, so um, I agree with these three main objectives for the year. You know, start thinking about 100 year anniversary next year. It, um, we could probably just get together at some point here and start brainstorming on it. You know, about a big celebration, but maybe we want other things happening too. Um, it'd be cool to highlight the history of the course and all that and just um, make that a fun event, a series of events. Um, explore outside food options, I think it's something we really should try to do this year, just given especially the kitchen thing is on hold for a while, um, just seeing what that might look like. And if, if we have to subsidize once or twice, at least we know kind of what 
So stats are you running with it. Our plan is to do at least four food trucks this year. Yep. Uh, and then we're looking at additional events where we have um, junior PGA events where maybe they bring in Chick-fil-A or you know, some ice cream truck, yep. something geared towards them. Um, so four is the goal with maybe some additional special events. Okay, great. Yeah, and then the, the rebranding. So you and I have exchanged a few emails on this recently. Um, Looking at social media, really first, but also the website. But you know, the new Facebook page, um, Instagram. Um, I know Kim's working on apparel, um, starting to roll out the logo. Um, but we have a lot of other things with that. But that's I think completing that by the following summer is a good goal. Great. I'm going to jump over Hector real quick. Back. Lake access points. Where is that? I think there's about 10 this year that we're gonna that we marked or we're in the process of marking. We approached, you know, uh, like Alyssa approached us about another one. Um, uh, the West Arms so is just looking at them throughout the years, visiting them, talking about uh, if neighbors are taking them down, where we're at, identifying different accesses, so just winter access. Do you think we so need to do, still have that as a focus? Probably doesn't necessarily need to be a focus. Okay. I would say though, the ones that we just marked this year, the only thing that they're marked for is pedestrian use only. And some of those lake access points have public <laughs> uses. Yeah. So I would say as a group, it would be good if they could sit down and at least identify what those uses are. And maybe it is only pedestrian use, but for yeah. you to say definitively, this is what it is. And Adam has like 80 years of history of what the city has voted on, like what what's agreed upon, use is, power, stuff like that. So just even just formalizing that and probably bring it to the city council would like. So that's your number two here, right? It is. Okay. Right. So I guess you're good. Yeah, we can, we can leave it, I guess. Should. Uh, Lurton Dog Park, um, parking lot expansion specifically. And it's becoming more and more of a need is mm -hmm. the biggest problem. You know, another, um, I don't know if we talked about this before, is that we explore the idea of um, data purchase? Because that's that's a problem sometimes with some of my friends, or like my wife goes on Friend Meets her, they don't live here, and they come once a year, twice a year, and they just want to say that day to, to have a permit, but they're not going to buy here because it's too inconvenient. Yeah. Still don't understand why we don't just have a box. We do have the box with the application. Yeah. Um, all they would need to do is they go, they park, yeah. they fill it out, and then at some point I mail it back to the city and then drop it off. So, okay, the day so pass we've talked about, yeah, uh, but, 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 but passes are increased. They, they've already increased for this year. So I would add a second goal here, which is to talk about either automating or using technology or in, you know, making like reviewing the process of how we collect money for whatever we offer there. Okay. Yeah, it's not that great at the moment. Yeah. Even the biannual pass is a slight inconvenience. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it just should be something you can do through an app on your phone. Yes, if you don't want to spend a hundred grand to collect dog food. No, no, no. no, no. no. But there's got to be existing apps that you can take. Well, I believe you can pay online. Yeah, so we should just review that. Okay. And, 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 and maybe part of it has to do with the signage and how clear it is sure. that it's promoting that. Yeah, I don't so know. I, I did go there after all these meetings with Pat. It's very clear that you're supposed to pay. Like, that's what the pass is for. It's just, like it's in your. Place. And we have staff there too, yeah. constantly reminding people. Did yeah. we get any increased compliance? I mean, after you talked about it all so long? Not really. It's it, because of our city code, it is a misdemeanor. Yeah. So if we have the police enforce it, which it seems pretty heavy handed with the parking pass. Mm -hmm. um, so we are rewriting portions of city code or reviewing city code uh, where that would become an administrative fee um, or administrative yeah. fine. It just seems point, silly that we're adding parking to. Be a greater enabler. 
We can just analyze our lead tag when I take one over and I see that they are lead tag and here's my first one. We know that the people are there after we know them. Well, I mean, my biggest issue, I think, since it's not a direct response generally, whether they pay or not, oh, there's too many people. So the idea was this year we increased talked about a related um, problem or related role for us, which is, which I wanted to open up to the group, which is this, I, I'm hearing more and more issues with the coordination of the scheduling of the fields that are both um, Orno fields, Orno city fields, other city fields. There's the, the, they're starting to get ugly between various parties involved in that process. So there's always, there's schools, there's cities, there's youth organizations, and they're all starting to battle. And I think that we have, we tripped upon this when we started talking about Hackberry with some of them. I think that there could be a role for us to try and resolve this and better, and I think that that would be Another focus that would be outside of Hackberry, but would be somehow related. If we wanted to poke our nose into that, if we think that that's not our role, then we don't need to do that either. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think we need to try to just advance it um, this year with some master planning efforts to, to at least advance the conversation that we had with the soccer, the lacrosse, the flag football, and the baseball. Yep. Yep. And understanding that we're probably not going to be able to make everybody totally happy. Yeah, you want to try to make as many people happy as possible. Okay. And um, and then hopefully that will clear up what's possible for from a scheduling standpoint down the road. This is going to happen for three years, but if we lock in on a plan that yep. gave each of them something that they could kind of count on down the road that might okay. make them feel like there's Something helping them, okay. but right, I'll leave that off. You know, stick your nose like, up. We'll be down the exposure, though. Like, uh, I'm not saying. I think you should be aware of all the scheduling out there. Yeah. Sure um, I'll leave that off until I can recruit someone who has a specific interest to help solve that. I think I wouldn't want to get too far ahead of ourselves, knowing we have a better understanding of what, what we even can deliver there as far as. What's compatible, you know, is the different with the seasonality of the different sports. And, and that's, yeah, I just, there needs to be, uh, yeah, I'm not saying that we propose a system to fix it, but that we try to encourage better cooperation. Is it, because is it that? Do, do these resources go unused? A significant portion of the time is that any, everybody wants to use them at the same time, and then they stumble on each other just because they don't 
know when it's available? I mean, is it is it an availability or is it a simply a communication thing? Like, is it it's, it's both, but it's, you know, they do. I mean, have we observed these areas and said, you know, here's a sample of days and here's how it was used? Have we actually observed the use of these particular parts to know what the usage actually is? Um. No, I'm just hearing you know, anecdotal. Um, I mean, maybe that would be a good thing to try to do this summer. Is to, I mean, is you know, is is to divide up parts and take particular days that you know we're monitoring particular parts and then just keeping track of how it's being used. You know, because I, I feel like a lot of times we're working off of anecdote and. You know, is it an offhanded thing? Is it a thing that happens once every six yeah. weeks? You know, like the facility that I use, you know, there's this big thing about how it has to be maintained available for the community. And we call open court empty court because it's available, but nobody walks in, right? And and so we're always in this quandary about why is there this demand for this open, available space that nobody actually uses when there's a whole lot of people over here wanting to use it? So I'm, I'm using that simply as because that's influencing my mind when you're talking about people having conflicts and how we actually observe the usage of the parts that we want to do master plans around by saying, what is the usage? Who's showing up? How many people are showing up? What times of day are they showing up? If we don't know that, so I think it's hard to For this year, as we're getting into kind of these just forming our thoughts about what it could be. I think that's really important. Like for the summer, spring to fall, we should have a good handle on yeah. between soccer, play football, baseball, and softball. Softball. I mean, could that be one of our projects is to divide up the parts and say over some period of time, you'll observe the usage and document it and then we'll aggregate that information some way. I mean, we'd have to think about how you do it in a thoughtful way that would be statistically valid. But so when we try to police, no, uh, I'm, uh, reserved time that it doesn't get used. No, not trying to please, but we we use an anecdote about people being upset without actually knowing what is the frequency of use, and therefore we can put the anecdote in context. Now, how much like do we observe our parks? Flag like football at, at Hacker, you know that they're. They're using all those times, weather protection. I mean, you could, all, all four of those associations, and you could get a good handle on how much they're actually using it. Yeah, yeah. It's, and it's not, the, the complication is it's not just about now, it's about all of them are experiencing growth, almost all, are experiencing significant gro growth in their programs and significant need. Yeah. I just wonder if people more. always like the same time of day yeah. because. It's always convenient to do it between 8 and 10 because your parents don't have any other plans between 8 and 10, and that's why they try to schedule all the events between 8 and 10 when it goes unused, whatever other time of the day. And, and that's just my instinct telling me that you may have more capacity than you recognize because people are defining capacity as a, as a very narrow time slot. And so I just think it's important to understand who's showing up and how often and how many people are showing up at these different parks so that as you're trying to plan for additional resources or usage, you know, hey, the peak time of use of this park is always between these hours and this day. Why is that? What does that say about how that park's being used? So I'm just saying it's important to understand a little bit more beyond what seems to drive a lot of things, which is the anecdote, the loud voice, the complaints, and so I, I just suggest that might be a good thing to do. You know, with some of the parks is to, to do and you know, just sit there for a day and observe what's going on in this park. It's just, it takes time to do it, but we could divide them up and do something like that. Okay. I think we did all the ones, right? We didn't we need to add golf course enhancements. Slash pickleball, 
And we have tap belts. That's mostly done. Like, other than listen to community and make recommendations. Yeah, I think there's a lot that block. So okay. Well, I mean. But I think that. It, there is. So you've got this. You've got this chicken and egg with that, right? You're saying. We won't make a decision until we've done the fundraising, but we can't do the fundraising until we've made a decision. And so I'm, I'm not quite sure what we're committing to. Are we committing to doing fundraising with a contingency plan? And, and that's the thing that goes on here right now, right? Because the other can't happen without that. But to not say we're gonna do fundraising, which is probably one of the most time consuming things we can do this year, seems silly to not put that on the plan. So I, I, I think we're a little, um, we're, we're a little start and stop when it comes to the actions that we need to take on the pickleball piece and then time passes, right? So I think we do have to kind of draw a line in the sand and say this, once we have the meetings, the next couple of meetings, which is this month, Yeah. what is the next step? And we're gonna, we're gonna go full forward with that step with, with this as the contingencies based upon the outcome of what we have. And I think, so I think we, we have to, to make that decision pretty quick. I think we need to continue to have a subcommittee for that. Yeah. So having a subcommittee is a little different than making a decision that fundraising will start on February one. You know, with a goal of completing it no later than I'm making this up April thirtieth, and by that date we'll have achieved this, or we don't go forward. That's my idea of a plan, right? You know you've got to get to 80% of your funding by a very specific date, or now you've just consciously said, we're not going to get there in time for 25 years. The, the fundraising piece is not park solution. I think that there's overlap, but I think that fundraising happens outside of park solution. As well, but and I so think it's, it's not, enabled by the Parks Commission. So I, you go forth and I agree, but I'm just hesitant about putting things on here that are uh, for involve people that are outside of the Parks Commission. But I think we need a. I think that it's pretty amorphous. I think that the part that the subcommittee, if it wants to be us, continue on this is focus on what needs to happen to push this to a recommendation or not a recommendation that goes forward to the, the city council and, and feedback from the, the fundraising activity could be part of that input. Yeah, as that well be, as yeah. other, that other things that come from the so SAP and so forth. So think about a coordination too between the, you know, the hockey, so like making sure they're up to speed, they have input, they've got a seat at the table, they're yeah. from the fund base, and all that. Neighborhood, and and neighborhood, there's like, I mean, there needs to be like a central, it's like a project manager for this whole thing that's keep an eye on, okay, we have the hockey funding, we got the, the pickleball funding, we got the grant over here, okay, do we have neighborhood input? That feels like there's a role for a subcommittee or somebody to yeah. keep an eye on all that. And if, if it does move forward, then is there a plan B and that subcommittee needs to decide whether there are two other sites or not? Sure. I think we will move like access points because it's actually on the back side. Focus area. Yep. So this is, again, the lake access point is just a standing committee. Yeah, no, but yeah, I was saying you could just add, meet to the lead commissioner next to Jan and her and I can work with her. Okay. All right. If we want to streamline the process. Okay. So can we add something on fish to pick the ball? Yep. Make up some purpose and put the three of us there unless someone else has an idea for it. Anything else to say about that? We'll, we'll finalize this, fill out some of the milestones and so forth as we head towards our next meeting. And then adopt it at our next formal meeting. This is the other piece of it, is just the assignments. Yes. And so this, the lead commissioner of the parks is just if there's an issue at the park, residents know who to reach out to, be the first point of contact. Um, so we have Elisa and Casey. Again, Kate. You said you're not done. Microphone. Okay. Did you see me on my hand and lose twice? Yeah. I don't remember that part. <laughs> <laughs> 
So point part? Yes. Unless we'll give you a drink too. I'm on the director. Okay. Thank you. Didn't see your name enough on the front side. So I'll let you do it. You or I want to take Antoine since. Yeah, I just need a better orientation to some of these parts because. Perfect. I just don't have any familiarity with any of them. I'm happy to go around the Indian parks as well. Yeah. And you do want to say, he's got a lot of it with him. Where? That's the okay, bag of points. Yeah. <laughs> Which one are you saying this bag of this? Any one. one. Oh, okay. I can take that one. She's a, she's a sneak back here. Hmm? I'm making fun of you over here. You're not even listening. <laughs> My daughter, they were, they were um, I went to pick her up at the airport and I was waiting for her to call. I came oh. back without him. So. <laughs> oh no. Uh, you said, is your donation very much? Awesome. What did you say about me, Brian? I just want to take the donation here. <laughs> oh yeah, why is it your son? You have to check, check the film. <laughs> so, do you have any issues with donation then? Thank you. Oh, okay. Come visit us. I will. Uh, We're probably not going to need it right now. Okay, we have Seven Nations and French Creek Park. I'm happy to take one of the two. Where is French Creek Preserve? Uh, right off. Seven Nations is close to your house. Okay. You know where that is off of Walnut Hill? Oh, there's no, there's no Seven Nations. You just put me on that one. Okay. It's not fair that Brian and I are in the street. same neighborhood because we could all be running for a club. And Cameron, of course. Oh, yeah, I just saw it. Seven Nations is on uh, Watertown, right? Yes. yes. Brian, I can take socks away from you right now. If you want. So that just leaves French Creek, right? Did I miss Livingston? Um, Chirsky. Oh, so French Creek. Sorry, Livingston. Yeah, Chirsky. Um, Chirsky. Chirsky to Livingston? Um, I thought you put her on French Creek. No, French Creek. Sorry. He was asking about Livingston. Right, you just gave up. I'll put Livingston. I like to 
go eat my EQ there with my kids. <laughs> this and send it out to you. Is that posted online? Is that how people know who to call? Or do you guys just give the name out when they call the city? I believe it is posted on is it? Yeah. On the website. Can I ask you guys a question? What, what happened in the spring that was straight out that was supposed to be maintained as a park trail? Next to us Rems along on Spring Hill Golf Course. It was one of the conditions that they let them build that. It's all overgrown, the fence is falling down. But isn't that Medina? Um, it's on the other side of Long Lake. So yeah, it's, it's, in it's on uh, it's Spring on the Lake. It's on the north side of the lake. Spring. Yeah, and so it's lake. on the south side of, of Six. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. I think that just got lost and uh, never got maintained. And I don't know if Spring Hill was supposed to maintain it as part of the condition for the golf course. Hmm. What is it? Con does it connect any to anything? Well, it would connect to the trail now that the goes around Long Lake. Long it's, Lake. Lake. it's just it's kind of a nature walk that's just set in from the road. Mm -hmm. So they have like split rail fencing and then another one. 
I mean, if, if by now, I mean, how many years has Spring Hill been there? Mm -hmm. By now, it's pretty overgrown and not, I don't think it was ever maintained. I'm sure they would rather it wasn't there. So it goes along the, the road, Spring Hill Road, right. from, from East Long Lake Trail west. Going west, yeah. yeah. Hmm. I didn't know that. Yeah. Hmm. I can look into it. I mean, I just always wonder about that. East Long Lake Trail is on here. Do you mark it on there? Oh, in the uh, oh. neither summit. Oh yeah, there's summit. East Long Lake is just an extension. Slash summit. summit. Okay. Well, that's where George Andrews is. All right. Anything else? Last meeting until the next one. We have one more. Depends on the weather. Yeah, nice. Depends we can get out of your driveway. Do you have to go back to the airport tonight? I don't know what they're going to do. They were coming from Paris and then they got, were circling Minneapolis. And I was at the airport and then they diverted them to Michigan. Oh. To oh no. But they're coming from Africa, so they've been on oh, a very oh, oh, You might not want to get in their car. Oh, God. Oh, God. so bad. What were they doing in Africa? It used to be um, different. Ted's, her husband's sister, when she was there, she was Yeah. So